Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to The Cypher. The Cypher! Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to The Cypher. Yo, we got Ali Aziz, Paul Mathan, Joseph Lee, and Shallow all together in the building, in the Zoom call, in together again. Welcome in the again. building. Hang on, yeah. y'all. In the building. Individual how, building. How, 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 how y'all <laughs> doing? Not bad, not bad. Doing mighty fine. Yeah. It's chilling. Hey, how you doing, Shava? It's, it's been, it's been, last time we had you on was with Matt Baden, but we didn't like really acknowledge that you were on for, that was like, that was your first time on for a while. So yeah. how you, how you been? It's been, a, it's been a minute. Just, just pandemicing. Um, <laughs> yeah, like just, I'm just here and alive. Like I said mm-hmm. before, just here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and like you, you, we're all like, I'll, I'll just say break it down for the for newcomers and new people. This is a cipher where we bring on different artists, different people, and in Toronto and outside of Toronto, where we kind of showcase their talents. And you know, this is four of us, four people, four friends in university, kind of do what we do, you know. And then we're just us today, but it, it, it's still it's still a fun episode. We kind of just talk about music, talk about our own experiences, experiences and stuff. Yeah, because we haven't got together like personally, like all four of us in like I don't even know how long, probably in like years. I'll say a year and a half. Because the yeah. like, guys, remember, COVID has been a year. Like, yeah. like I keep forgetting. I keep feeling like I'm still in March 2020, like 2020. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the last time we connected would have been like maybe a year and a half maybe even like longer yeah yeah man you know I mean? that's been so long so a long Crazy. time <laughs> I, I i feel like the last one we had the last episode we had we with all of us together was that episode two i think it was the episode after oshana where we talked about like city music and mm-hmm. kanye west and all that wasn't that like 2019 <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean at this point probably. yeah probably because like well we had oshana in 2019 Oh yeah, it would have been 29 because 2020 guys remember like 2020 <laughs> and I think a lot of our brains 2020 doesn't really count because we're just like it nah, didn't count. Count. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean yeah. so we're kind of like I think every whenever people are like oh yeah last year but I'm when people say like last year I'm thinking 2019 though yeah because 2020 nothing happened Ooh. well I mean yeah, stuff no, happened but like yeah <laughs> so yeah avoid exactly crazy. yeah but like, yeah, we're, we're back so, so how, how's quarantine treated y'all it's it's been all right it's been I, mean, like, I don't even know yet yeah like i don't even know I, I feel like we talked about a little bit a little bit about this in like the episode of pascal or like what we learned from 2020 but like uh-huh. 2020 in general it's like they all have ups and downs and like not only like school but like also like personal growth as well i feel yeah yeah yeah, how, a lot how of about stuff. you guys? Paul, you started streaming. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I did. I did. Were you streaming um, before, or you just started I mean, streaming? I used to stream like a couple, maybe like a few years ago, um, but then I stopped, and then I tried to get back in it, but then I guess I stopped again now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm gonna try and get back to it, but um, but yeah, streaming was something I really got into during um during lockdown just because i had more time on my hands and uh mm. i don't know played more video games and yeah i don't know my friends or everyone was just telling me to start streaming again so mm-hmm. yeah. i hopped in paul stream once and i said hi and same yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were you what, what were you playing again were you playing modern warfare uh i don't even know yo like i play a lot of games like i did uh, a lot of call of duty some racing at one point, I was also doing uh, Red Dead Redemption. And like, sure. like this was like late, late night, um, one two a.m. and even to a point where I would play chess as well. It'd be like four a.m. Mm. and I was streaming chess at one point. Um, a lot of uh, music as well. Making uh, I've been getting into making beats. Um, okay, that's cool. Yeah, we'll have Paul on as it like you have them yeah. Paul on as a guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm learning. Um, mm-hmm. I got this device called the uh, a machine micro um mk3 it's by native instruments and um 
yeah, it's like a sample based um, beat pad kind of thing. And uh, like I was just taking samples, chopping them up and, you know, making stuff out of it, adding yeah. drum, uh, drum patterns and just, yeah, just messing around with it. So that's yeah, that's cool. Um, that's really cool. I've always admired like uh, my friend, he's a sampler, like a producer. I've always admired like people that can sample stuff and then make it like, mm -hmm. I'm like a, yeah. I'm obsessed with samples. Cause when you look at actually like most, a lot of the best music, it's mm. literally just a sample. Yeah. All of Kanye's stuff, it's all samples. Exactly. Probably even exactly. Logic, because I know you're into Logic. Like, yeah. probably samples. That's literally what yeah. it is. <laughs> logic, he definitely got into sampling um, maybe past... Okay, I mean, the sampling I saw in him back in 2015 on his album, The Incredible True Story, where he released um, one song, uh, The Greatest or I Am The Greatest. And mm -hmm. in that in that music video, you see him using a drum drum pad. So he's been working with drum pads for like over six, seven, eight years probably. Hmm. But in the past couple of years, past year, he's like he's really good. Like hmm. if you watch his streams, like he can he can like like on the beat, he can drum for days and take samples from like vinyls and right. He released a uh, he released a, a project called um, under the name Doctor D. I don't know if you guys heard of it, um, mm -hmm. Doctor D Music. So I feel like it is logic, but he sort of made up this made up like artist because we never see the, uh, Dr. D's face, right? And um, right. but a lot of people are saying it's just logic and the whole mixtape, it's on uh, it's on uh, datpiff.com uh, and uh, yeah, the whole uh, album, it's it's beautiful. Like it's a lot of hardcore like beats and samples and I recommend you guys check it out. Um, it's called, you said Dr. D, the name Dr. of the album? D, uh, that's the name of the art artist. Um, I think the album called is called uh, Planetary Destruction. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's beautiful though. It's beautiful. Mm. I believe you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, 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 and like, right just now, just just going into uh, kind of those albums and those like, kind of um, albums that kind of go under the radar. Are, are there any like songs or albums that you guys feel are kind of in your top favorites that people don't really talk about all that much? um well okay actually kind of relating to what you're saying but also sort of not and i feel like this would be a good debate actually so okay a lot of people feel like recently um i think all oh, the grammys recently little baby i don't know if you guys listen to little baby do you guys okay. listen to little yeah baby? i listen to little baby yeah. okay so people are feeling that little baby just getting repeatedly disrespected um my brother is a huge fan of little baby and he feels like i think at the grammys like meg the stallion beat out Lil Baby, Dub Baby, Pop Smoke, Nipsey Hustle. I think it was WAP. Was it WAP or Body Body Yaddy? Oh, I don't know. I don't know which one, but I think no, WAP. No, no, no. I think it was, I think it was Body 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 Yaddy. Yeah. That one? Okay. <laughs> well, essentially, she's beat out like Pop Smoke, Nipsey Hustle, Lil Baby, Dub Baby, even um, Roddy Rich. So, like, all the biggest rappers kind of like right now. Mm. So, what do you guys, how do you guys, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think? I'm curious. Yeah, people People are saying the Grammys are rigged because she beat out all these other guys. But at the same time, like, like what is the Grammys based on? Like, is it based off of, like, how many streams you get? Is it based off your popularity? Like, is it based off, you know, critics? Like, like I don't know how that works, mm -hmm. but people are saying the Grammys are rigged. Right, right, right. Because The weekend yeah. actually, he uh, withdrew all of his, um, like, he didn't mm -hmm. participate. He, you know what I mean? He forfeited oh, really? the Grammys this year. To kind of make yeah. a statement and be like, ah, the Grammys are, they don't know what they're doing kind of thing. Mm. But yeah, people are just I mean, feeling like, go ahead, Paul. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we, I feel like we've known this Grammys aren't like legitimate ways to determine like, like who's good mm. and who's bad. Um, I feel like there's a lot of politics and a lot of like strategic moves and there's people behind it like that, that don't really know music as well. And we've mm. seen it like, if you go back like 10, 15 years, you've seen Eminem sort of like, you know, like go against the Grammys and stuff like that. And like, even though he's won Grammys and stuff, but at a certain point, he was just like, you know, like this doesn't really determine anything. And um, mm -hmm. even the, I don't know when this was, 2018, 20 something like 2018, I think when Mac Miller didn't win um, album of the year or artist mm -hmm. of the year, I can't remember which category. And people were just, heartbroken and i think mm. cardi cardi b broke uh won uh, can't remember which category it was album mm -hmm. of the year or something and that year cardi b uh, beat mac miller Nipsey hustle 
um i think travis scott even right and, oh yeah i don't know oh, yeah. yeah right like travis mm-hmm. scott like he put so much work into like um his astral world like mm-hmm. right like what was that yeah, right. you nominate yeah. you nominate mac miller you invite mac uh, miller's like uh mom like and you don't give him the award like <laughs> Right. I don't know. Right, yeah. right. It's like was was that the same? Was that um, was it was this the Grammys? Like when Macklemore beat uh Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Kanye, yeah. all those big. Was that the Grammys as well? I think so. I think okay. so. Oh, yeah, no, that was a crazy year. Macklemore beat like Kendrick, J. Cole, Kanye, like <laughs> you know. And so that that's 2018, right? That's when he released his album. Damn. Macklemore Kendrick, or right? Mac Miller? Kendrick. Or Ken- uh, oh yeah, that would have been probably I think 2016. 2016. 2016. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's why I mean like like just music in general is all very subjective, but like e- even even as subjective as it is, I feel like there are times you know that this song, this album is like a great work of art, you know? Like this yeah. person put this amount of time into it, this amount of like work that that's been dedicated to it. And like it, it doesn't seem it seems jaded at times, like how they, um, how they kind of critique what album wins an award. But at the same time, it's like, right. it's like, how how how, how yeah. do you how do you even like determine who wins over another at that point? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't know. We don't know who's choosing who's choosing mm-hmm. these winners for you know like. They could be rich white people who just want to see. Like it's true. Like you don't know mm-hmm, who's yeah. behind them. Like rich white people who just want to promote one artist and um, I don't know, like sort of reach a bigger profitable demographic or something. You don't know, right? Um, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. But anyways, yeah, Ollie, yeah. your question, like you said, uh, are there any albums or like works of music or thing that you feel like are maybe underrated or should we mm-hmm. get more? Was it more? Acknowledgement right. from the masses. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, just like in general, like what are some of the, some of the songs or albums that you guys feel like are great works of music that not as many people will give it that attention, give it the attention that it needs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, uh, Mac Miller's Circles. Um. My favorite, I gotta say, to say, favorite album of all time, and mm. his last uh, album that he released, like uh, after he passed away. Um, I feel like that album, like it's beautiful. I just feel like not enough people have heard it. I don't know if you guys have heard it. Like, let me know. Yeah, but I don't think I have. I, think so. have I don't. I haven't listened to much of Mac Miller to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I like after uh, Mac Miller passed away, I I listened to a lot of his um, swimming album, but then I really got deep into it and listened to literally like all his past uh, works and um yeah like I was amazed like um I didn't listen to him a lot like when he was alive but after his death I really I really started going into it and yeah like I feel like circles it's like beautiful beautiful uh-huh. way to like sort of like people were calling it like it's like like his end credits like that's how beautifully it was made and interesting right like if you if you um it was actually like a two-part project, um, his past album Swimming and Circles. Um, <clears throat> Mac, uh, I atten- intentionally did this. Um, the project was called Swimming in Circles. So he's got, he released the first album Swimming and then he had the second like sort of part two Circles. And um, it really, it really fits together. Like Circles really, it's a, it's beautiful. You guys got mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, I'll to no- I'll note that. Cause I think albums too, it's nowadays everyone's just releasing small like short albums eps there's no art to it like mm-hmm. how you said the part yeah. one part two and it felt like end credits like i feel like that sounds more like a piece of art you know yeah mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah yeah i mean there's a lot of For artists me, that... if... sorry, sorry go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry 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 go ahead no i can go yeah <laughs> oh i was just gonna say quickly um yeah there's some artists who really put in a lot of work and i feel like a lot more artists need to you know like get that recognition instead of um I don't know what you guys are singing right now that bada yada yadi 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 yeah I heard it uh, do you, you feel about it do you like do you like it is that a thing that you'd be uh work out to guys Joe and no. No, 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 no. I think I think Joe might but no that's not no no, no. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I got that back lower back muscle you know 
As you're lifting, it's like body, yada, yada. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I heard it on TikTok and then I started listening to it a little bit and it, it was pretty catchy too. But, it uh, is. Because it's so repetitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, like, like uh, how, how, do you, how do you guys feel about like just like just songs in general or maybe more so like hip hop songs that are just like super super commercial like that like are played everywhere and like at times do you feel like i mean i mean i i guess it also depends on the the context of the song as well but like how do you guys feel about like hip hop songs that are kind of like mad that crazy commercial like that do you think it feel it ever takes away from like the actual song itself I feel like it does. I feel like it does a little bit in a sense, um. Because I I don't know about you guys, but I, I I go on TikTok, you know, on my on my free time, and then every time I go on TikTok, there's always a new trend, always a new sound, and then a lot of those sounds are from these mainstream, not or like yeah, like mainstream, uh, pop artists or hip hop artists and stuff, and I feel like it kind of takes away the, um, not really take away, but. I don't know, man. To be actually, no, nah, I changed. Like, I kind of, I think, I think it helps the artists in a way because it helps them get more eyes and more recognition on their music, which is, you know, which they're probably not complaining about because that means more streams, more streams equals more money. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't really, I don't think it necessarily takes away from, you know, the meaning of the of the music or the meaning of, you know, that. But yeah, yeah I don't know. I'm pretty neutral with that. I, th- yeah. I think I think maybe maybe I should I should word it a bit differently. Not take away, but like when when we hear songs on TikTok and songs on here and there, it's it's like I feel like, or well, at least for me and for most people, like you you only hear that in that small snippet of what that song is, mm-hmm. and kind of just like fly by. Cause like there's a song, I think it's with the baby and someone else. Let me let me, Say let the, me find the baby. It. Can you, can you yeah. sing it for us? <laughs> <laughs> Give no, us a live I mean, sample no. right now. <laughs> well, I mean, when uh, you talk, start talking about commercial songs, the, the baby is the first person I thought. Yeah, like, that's true. And I feel like it does take away from the experience of the music because I don't listen to the baby anymore. Like, I feel like he's just too too mainstream now. It's kind of mm-hmm. annoying, low-key. Uh, but... Yeah, yeah. Like, I think we've talked about it in other episodes too. Like, mm. I feel like the baby sort of, like... I don't know, his flow is just very like, Repeti- similar, same thing. repetitive, same thing. And I don't know, I, I just, like, I stopped listening to him, like, a while ago. And I don't know, if I hear songs on TikTok, um, I don't have TikTok. Actually, I don't have TikTok. So just let me just say that. Um, I don't even have Instagram anymore right now. But I'm just saying, like, I have friends that they'll tell me, oh, this song on the radio has been a win for me because they heard it so much on TikTok. But then for me, I'm like, oh, I'm glad I don't have TikTok because this music is still you know still sounds new to me and um, mm-hmm. right right true, true. So it, yeah i feel like it's still sort of, like it the song sort of gets old or worn out if you hear it over and over again in right. a, a commercialized a commercialized setting you know mm-hmm. that's that's very true i feel like yeah, some yeah. songs i feel like i feel like some songs are like made specifically to be mm-hmm commercial like you know what i mean like yeah. Yeah. where it's less about you know what i mean like i feel like some songs it's not even for example like meg the stallion body like is that meant to be a work of art, um, you know, where you listen to the music and you think deeply about it? <laughs> Probably I have not. Another example of that: Drake's um, back in back in last quarantine, Drake Tootsie released Roll. another song. Tootsie Roll. It's called yeah, Tootsie, Tootsie, Roll. Tootsie, Roll. Tootsie Roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like Tootsie. for TikTok. That's, yeah, yeah, that's literally for TikTok. Right, right. So in I mean, a sense that you know, it's, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean that was very smart of him. Like he intentionally made that song. Um, it was beautifully made. Like he's in lockdown, so a tour of his house. Mm-hmm. Um, he hired TikTokers to make up the dance. So it was all it was all strategic. And yeah. I must say, TikTok's influence on music is just like crazy. Like, it, it, oh my yeah, gosh, it, it, it's it's really interesting yeah. to see how like not only like mainstream artists like kind of blow up over and over again, but also like smaller artists kind of, especially with the way like TikTok works and how views and how they how people get views and all that it's like it's really interesting to see how these like small time artists kind of blow up kind of kind of have like these like mini blow ups of like their songs or yeah. things that they do and stuff yeah 
Yeah. But Ollie, going back to your original question where um, you asked if you think there's any artists that kind of don't get as much recognition. And I would have, if I would have had to answer that question a year ago, I would have said Pop Smoke. Because... Uh, same, dude. Because... Because because I remember recording in, in the studios and then Shallow asking oh, yeah, yeah. She, she, you yeah, mentioned about yeah, you mentioned about that. Pop Smoke's death and stuff. And then and I remember telling you that, you know, I don't really appreciate like not appreciate, mm-hmm. but I never like his music never really stood out to me. Like just kind of yeah. it wasn't it was like the drill kind of genre wasn't kind of my type of thing. Mm-hmm. And I never really kind of appreciated the music, but the thing is this is the same uh, situation with Nipsey Hustle. After these artists die they get so much more recognition and they get so much more love because they died like it's just right 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 it's crazy so yeah if i would have had to answer that question a year ago i would have said pop smoke 100 percent. pop smoke yeah. is a legend guys he's a legend <laughs> yeah. i've been a I mean, pop smoke guys, obsessive yeah. since you guys know this i don't think the one. beginning Charles <laughs> <and OG>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true though like joe what joe what you're saying is so real like and it, it comes down to you know, when you look at Pop Smoke and even other artists that have passed away and they're being nominated for really big things and winning things, mm-hmm. you're thinking, even though the music's great, sometimes you think, hmm, like, a part of it is probably just because they also passed away. Like, people naturally, I think when an yeah. artist dies, everyone wants to listen because they're like, hmm, who is this mm-hmm. guy, right? Yeah. I don't think mm-hmm. Pop Smoke would be nearly as big if he was alive. You yeah. know what I mean? I agree, so I agree. It's like, because yeah. 50 Cent, his posthumous album, um, it's all 50 cents doing it's on the radio i hear the same songs on the radio all the time that was not a thing beforehand right mm-hmm. so it's like it's really weird you know yeah and and, and like, even the fact that he died before his album came out too it just like skyrocketed yeah. everything that he had before i think like, like that, that one movie um boogie coming out have you guys that, seen the trailer is that with like pop smokes in it yeah he's like and the, in it the asian basketball player yeah yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I've seen a trailer for that. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like it's like really interesting to see like someone so young, like, and his career like kind of evolving as he as this is going on, but then he dies along the way, and but he you still see yeah. things come out and stuff. It's like, yeah. Crazy. I mean, yeah. Pop Smoke had a a lot of potential. Like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, um, yeah. I just I would just go back and watch his interviews and stuff, and for like what twenty years old, like. I mean, he had everything the charisma the, the you know the uh face for camera the you know the the style the voice the voice know, like, the voice yeah like 20 years old like uh he's just on tv so comfortable you know and he, I know, yeah. uh i feel like he would have gone much 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 further for you sure. know if if he was still here um yeah. Well, right when he passed, as you guys know, he was literally on, you know, you're on the brink, like the brink of like blowing up. He was actually supposed to go on tour and it was sold yeah. out. I remember I was trying to get tickets. I don't know if I told you, but I was trying to get tickets. Yeah, I remember. Kwaku was also I remember, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah. And like, so he was on the brink of touring, doing all the big things, then bam. Like, I think it even like what, what, a week later from when he released his tour dates, he was killed. So it's yeah. just crazy. Like he was acting in that film that uh, the movie that's supposed to come out and yeah, whatnot, but it's just like crazy. So Yeah, man, like... It's especially with, with everything that's happened over over the the year twenty twenty. It's like it's so interesting to see like how these like, young and old like Kobe Bryant, Chadwick Boseman, Juice World, Pop Smoke, how like regardless of how like young and old they were, it it, it kind of like makes us feel like the, their impact after they die. And it's kind mm-hmm. of it's kind of odd at at the same time. It's like. They did all this stuff, Juice World, Pop Smoke, Chadwick Boseman, yeah. Kobe, and like we, we didn't really take it in because they were still there. Yeah. But like now that they're gone, it's like, well, yeah. like look at look at I their mean, discography yeah. and stuff. It's it's true. Artists know that. Like so many people, like so many artists say that you know, like they don't love you until you're gone. So yeah, yeah. it's it's a sad. Well, why do you why do you think that is? Do you think that's a lack of? Do you think that's a lack of? you know, like, marking, do you think it's a lack of, like, having, like, like, why do you think people show way more love to artists after they pass away, whereas, you know, if you, you could have just shown them the same love before they're gone, you know? Yeah. Like, what do you think, what do you think that is? What do you guys think that? I think, it, I think it's just human nature, like, like, peop, like, people like to bash, like, oh, you, you only like them because they're gone, like, but things, I think it's just in human nature where I agree. someone passes away, like, like we're we're sort of inclined like our like we tell it like we don't tell ourselves like we're 
automatically like oh like fuck like like i want to you know listen to like what this person did or see what they did like we are drawn to it you know because we just want to know a bit more about them and Mm -hmm. sort of feel like we're connected Mm because i feel like everyone just sort of wants to feel a connection with someone like like with us like we we have a connection right now we feel comfortable we're able to do this and i don't know i think people just want to feel connected whether that's with the person that's alive or someone who they barely knew and are trying to find that connection in some sort of way you know so i think it's too when i think it's like when uh one i don't think humans appreciate things until they're gone i think that's just a human thing too we don't really we're kind of just like when when things are normal you're just like ah whatever until it's gone you're like shit right oh i'm not supposed to i swear you're like damn (laughs) right um but i think also when these artists they pass away and they're making headlines and they're all over the news if you never listen to them naturally you're gonna be like who's that and naturally Mm -hmm. i feel like you're gonna check them out because they're not here anymore and because they're all over social media everyone's talking about Mm -hmm. them you know what i mean so i think even like when mac miller passed away mm-hmm. I, had, I don't really listen to him to be honest but yeah. like now when i see his name on tracks or even featuring on tracks i'm like oh like i make a note in my head it's very it's very conscious mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah wow like i mean I, I, I just like moving on from that it's just like it's interesting to see how you think like, young artists kind of evolve and stuff it, it, it's it's really interesting to see how mm-hmm. a young artist can go from where they started out off to and to where they end in terms of like mm-hmm. we, we don't like like drake kendrick j cole and stuff like that, how we can see how they not only do they grow older and kind of grow yeah. with their taste but they're also their their first song to their newest song and how they've yeah. changed and stuff and, and it's really interesting to see how, how it's because like I'm, I'm thinking also like history of like pop music and so we, we yeah. didn't, we, we, we've gone from like minstrel like 1950s to like we we're in like 1980s now and it's interesting to see how like an artist's just discography kind of evolved as they grow and with t- technology mm-hmm. and as well and so like yeah and just like is, is there any like artist that you guys have followed i mean i, I know paul you've followed logic for uh, for for a minute now but like are there any artists that you've been following for a while that you've that you've that you've enjoyed their growth and their journey i mean charlie can go uh, first yeah go first. Okay. um hmm well i was gonna say pop smoke but his discography is very short but maybe actually there's a female rapper named rico nasty um <laughs> And I listened to some of her older stuff and, you know, she's progressed massively. Like, I feel like a lot more, well, no, she's not mainstream, but a lot more people know about her. Um, and I wouldn't say I like her newer music better than her older music, to be honest. Like, I feel like some artists, they progress and the discography, the discography gets bigger, but like, you don't like their new stuff. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. But like, maybe, yeah, Rico, Rico Nasty. That's who's coming to mind right now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> for, for me, I, I feel like it's, it's Big Sean and Chance Rapper. Cause I, I like I, oh, I, I forgot. I, Sorry, I forgot all of your chance the rapper. Like you love, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a minute since he's gone. He since he's released anything. But like the chance chance the rapper and Big Sean were like big artists that I listen to, listen to and still listen to now. Cause it's from like high school to now, it's been like really interesting to see these like different albums come out and see like. Oh, this person has a child now. This kid, this person is like talking about their marriage and all that. It's like really, inter- really interesting to like not only like listen to what they're talking about, but also like reflect on how they're ch- how they're changing and how their music is like also changing and like mm-hmm. kind of like taking taking a different direction because of their life and all that. But I I guess that's also like true in all artists because like what they what they see and what they know is what they talk about. Really, right? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Joe, yeah. Joe, you got uh, you got noise? Yeah, I, mine's mine has to be the weekend because ah, uh, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, because his music have been like, his music reflects on um his his life story in a sense that um like when he first when, or when he had his breakup and then he was battling through depression. And he was battling through uh, drug addiction, 
And he eventually overcame that drug addiction and showcases new music, new style. And his muse, his songs throughout that timeline have always reflected his experience with it. So I can't remember exactly which song on top of my head, but a lot of his songs, like um, like Blinding Lights, that reflects, you know, his his like drug addiction or something like that. A lot of his, you know, like a lot of his songs reflects on his experience and his timeline with, you know, with his life. So I think I feel like I kind of grew up with the weekend and kind of listened to him as he kind of progressed as a human mm-hmm. being. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I have like a couple artists, honestly. Like, um, obviously, Logic is one I've been following since high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was talking about the other day. I don't know to who, but um, like he had. I feel like he had one of the most cleanest careers ever. Um, his career runs from say like age twenty one to now uh, maybe 30, 31, 10 years. Mm-hmm. And um, I used to listen to his uh, mixtapes back in high school. Um. And then when his first album came out, um, Under Pressure, and then his other uh, album, like, uh, I think a year later, uh, Incredible True Story, like, I feel like he has progressed um, in a very, like, um, in a good manner. Um, Because you can see, like, in his older songs, he talks a lot about, you know, like, like, more childish stuff, you know, like, chains, money. But when you get to his last album um no pressure um he's got a track um i think ollie was saying like how rappers rap about their kids and you know their daily activities and i think uh, logic has a song uh, called uh uh dad bod um where he just sort of <laughs> yeah he just talks about like how everyone just wants him to like rap about his old life mm. uh, or rap about his like they want to know what's going on in his life and he literally raps about how He's just taking care of his kids, changing diapers, and and right. he's like, "This is this what you guys want to hear? Like, you guys want to hear me talk about changing diapers?" Right. Um, so I think he made it pretty clear, like he is like grown up now. He's got a kid. He's married. Like, um, so you can sort of see that nice progress um, through you know through his through his life from rapping about you know like what all young rappers uh, talk about chains, money. Even J Cole used to do that stuff before you know when j cole had his chains right um right. Uh, you see i don't know um even mac miller like mac miller if you go back to his older interviews and stuff like that his music was very like very like you know a bit more provoke provocative in a way um mm-hmm. and by the end of it it was so graceful like his last album so graceful so elegant mm-hmm. and uh, i think mac miller is a very good example how an artist can sort of go from like the childish you know like new to all this fame mm-hmm. and stuff to like growing into a you know well-mannered young young person and it's like there's like it's beautiful like if when an artist actually can achieve that um and i think mac mm-hmm. miller achieved that really really quick compared to other other artists um mm-hmm. he passed away at 28 but he i feel like he still sort of completed that nice cycle of kid to nice mature you know person and there's people like you know juice world will never really know like Mm -hmm. he was on a good path to changing and making his life better and right right but it's just saddening like some people will just never see that sort of Mm -hmm. like switch like that that switch that that like sort of path that you know timeline in a way Mm -hmm. Um, right that's interesting that you said that it makes me want to i know you've been saying shadows into logic for a while i still haven't really peeped his like stuff Mm -hmm. properly but it's interesting, like, how you were able to really see that progression. I feel like yeah. that's just golden, like, being able to see an mm-hmm. artist and them mm-hmm. progress like For that. Sure. Like, I feel like that's really cool, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And I think we'll come up to the end of this episode, episode 16, you know, 17, 17, 18. Whichever, <laughs> One of whichever, those. whichever comes first. But this is the end of the episode. We want to thank you guys for coming through coming on to the episode you know i think i think we were able to get some like really dope conversations about music and then how we as an audience see music and you know we'll keep grinding keep coming at you with new and more exciting episodes but catch you on the next episode peace bye